and welcome to the Dream Scene Montage Tutorial. What I'm going to show you how to do in this video is how to take several different photographs and combine them together and create something extraordinary that you would never think that you would be able to create with these photographs. It's a complete montage scene. For an example, we're going to take this shot of this beach, this picture of this elephant, and this picture of this bridge, and these two towers, and these wings, and we're going to turn all this into something that looks like this. And this is our little elephant with wings montage. And I'm going to show you all the little things that I did to create this image. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, most people would look at this image right here and maybe look at it and say, well, it looks a little bit difficult to make. But the secret is, is actually very simple. And I'm going to show you how I did this. Even if I remove the color overlays from this image, it almost just about gives it away. It's because the most important thing about this is the color blending, which really makes the overall montage look its best. Because a lot of it, most of it, is just about cropping and creating some other little few effects that are really not that hard to do. Anybody can do this. But by learning the techniques during this video, you can go off and learn how to create your own montage scenes that look just as good as this. So what I'm going to do first is go ahead and move this image out of the way and let's go ahead and begin our own montage. So first, I'm going to come up here to File and New. And now I already know the size that my image is going to be. So I'm just going to enter in 2020 for the width. And for the height, we're going to go about 1032. And make sure that this is set to pixels. And for the resolution, let's just do 300 for the resolution. And when you have all that, you can go ahead and click OK. Next, what we're going to do is start off by gathering all the photos and getting them into this new image here so we can start the montage. So I'm going to go back over to the Adobe Bridge. And what I'll do is zoom out a little bit so you can see all the images here that we will be using. And the first one here, which is the beach image, let's just go ahead and double click on this and load this right up into Photoshop. And then I'll click on the zoom tool and click on the image and drag that over to this image over here. And then I can move this around. Now, if you don't know exactly what you're going to create, you can always experiment. Now, since I've already done this image, well, I already really know what I'm going to do. So I'm going to show you how to do the elephant wings image that you saw earlier. But I wanted to create this scene so it looked like the earth was just flooded with water and there was no land. And all there was was just an elephant and there were some other objects out in the water, some other buildings and towers. And so what I want to do then in this case is bring this down so we don't see the land. You see that? And if you look very closely, you'll see that this image looks a little bit crooked. It's not really that crooked, but just the way the shot was taken, you can see that the horizon here and you could see that the land is a little bit crooked. So let me show you a really cool technique that you can do to straighten out photographs. All you have to do over here on the toolbar is click on the eyedropper tool and then you'll find the measure tool, which is right here. Now to straighten out the image, all we have to do is look for that crooked plane. And in this image, it's very easy to tell that all we have to do is just click next to the top of the water here and rest this ruler right on top of that. You see that? And then come up here to image down here to rotate canvas and select arbitrary right here. Now, as soon as you select that Photoshop's going to enter in an automatic value right in here because it's going to look at the ruler and look at the angle of the ruler and it's going to go ahead and create the value that's needed to make this image straight. And so let's just leave that value like it is and go ahead and click OK and watch this. Photoshop will straighten this image on this layer for you. Look at that. And we have, we could probably cover up the sides here a little bit. I can just select the move tool 
and position this over. Or better yet, I can select Edit, Free Transform, and I can zoom out of the image a little bit. Hold down Alt, which is Option on the Mac, and I'll enlarge this image just to cover the canvas completely. Look at that. Then I'll go ahead and confirm that. And then I'll bring this down just a little bit, just somewhere like there. And so we can just sort of imagine the elephant and the other buildings and towers in the water. And I like having this extra space up here in the image as well, just so we can create a nice composition. All right, next, let's go over to the Adobe Bridge and look at some of the other images that we can use for this project. And what we can do first is let's bring in this bridge that I have right here. Now, keep in mind that I've already cropped these images for you, so you don't have to. I've totally saved you that step. I'm just going to show you how to combine them all together to create the montage dream scene. So I'm just going to double click on this tower to bring it into Photoshop. And if you would like to get better at cropping, please check out the cropping and masking tutorial that you'll find on this course. But you'll see here that I've completely removed the background. You can see this is what it was originally. Look at that. And I just totally removed that. So since I've already done this, all I have to do is select the Move tool, click on this bridge here, and just drag that over to the montage image, just like this. What I want to do now is make this a smart object. Now, if you're using Photoshop 7 or Photoshop CS, you might not be able to make a smart object, and that's okay. So you can go ahead and just skip this part. But I'm going to come up here to Edit, or I'm sorry, Layer, over here to Smart Objects, and group this into a smart object. That way that this layer right here is non-destructible. So let me go ahead and just name this. We'll make this up as maybe like an oil tower. And it'll be hard to tell what it is once we get it out there and blur it and everything like that. But what I'm going to do over here, edit, and down here to free transform. And what I'll do is turn on this button right here, which is the maintain aspect ratio button. And I'll adjust the width size down to about 25%. And that'll resize it down enough so I can select the transformation handles. I'll hold down Alt, which is option on the Mac, and also Shift and I'll click on one of the corners and grab those handles and just resize this down and I can position this off in the distance and that's how we want it to look anyway but if I move this over here somewhere about right here and you don't have to be perfect because since these are smart objects the layers are non-destructible so therefore we can go back and resize the images if we need to without losing any quality of this layer. So I like this. I'm going to go ahead and just press the enter key on the keyboard to confirm that transformation. And I can just bring this down. Let me try that one more time. Select the move tool here. And I'll bring this down right about here. There we go. And I'm going to make another copy of this oil tower layer. And I'll just call this oil, oil tower far because I'm going to create another oil tower, but this one's going to be out in the distance. So it's going to be smaller. Something like this. There we go. And I'm just going to put it out in the distance, just like this. And here's a trick that you can do, is to make these look like they're farther away. What you can do when you're creating any type of sequence, or whatever it is, you can blur the images and that will bring more focus with the foreground object and it also make it look like they're set back a little bit farther. Now we can't blur a smart object layer so what we have to do is come over to the layer thumbnail down here at the very bottom right corner and you'll hover over that and it'll say smart object thumbnail. Well if I double click on that it will load the image up in its own separate window here and then so we can blur the image or we can blur the tower here inside this image instead. Photoshop creates a, a temporary PSB file that allows us to edit this layer in its own separate document, which is kind of nice. But what we can also do is make a duplicate layer inside this PSB file, so I can drag this smart object image here 
and make a duplicate of it. Even if we make changes to this PSB file, we can always go back and revert back to the original as well. So there's lots of things you can do here. If I come up here and go to File, Save, and if I close this, Photoshop will update the image. Then check this out. I can come right over to the Smart Object layer, double click on that icon right here, and it opens up this PSB file and I still have both those two layers. And the reason why I'm showing you this is because we're gonna apply a blur to this tower, but I don't wanna affect the original. I, I don't wanna totally destroy the original because once we blur things, it's really hard to get back the original detail in the image, almost impossible. So I like to make a copy. And so what I'll do is come up here to Filter, Blur, and over here to Gaussian Blur, and we'll blur this out just a little bit, just like this. There we go, that looks good. I'll go ahead and click OK. And then what I can do after this is done applying, I'll come up here to File, Save, and then as soon as I move back over to this image, Photoshop will update our montage scene image right here. Look at that. Now it's hard to tell that anything has really happened, but if I select the Zoom tool and zoom in, we can see that this layer is slightly blurred. And if I come over to the history palette, we can see this is before, and now this is after. Just removing some of that little bit of detail there. Now let's go back over to the layers palette, and I'll double click on this oil tower far. And for this one, I'll come up here to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And now this one's just a little bit more farther off in the distance. So what I'll do is increase the blur of this image here. There we go, and then I'll go ahead and click OK, and then I'll come up here to File, Save, and then I'll click back over on the image. Photoshop will update our montage image here, and there we go. And we can go ahead and just zoom into it real, real closely here, and we can see clearly that this is before, and this is after. So there you go. Those little fine details make a big difference. And we could probably blur those out a little bit more, but we can always go back to that later on. Now, to make these two towers here, make them look like they're really in the water, but because you can see right here that it's just too... The edge is very defined right here on the bottom of these towers. One thing that we can do with these smart objects is create layer masks on these layers. So we don't always have to open them up and edit them in their own separate files. We can actually just select the layer and come down to the bottom of the layers palette and click on this add layer mask button and that'll create a layer mask right next to this smart object so what i can do with that is actually erase away parts of the image which without actually affecting the image itself so i can just click on the oil tower layer mask and make myself a brush here that's a little bit soft and then I'll make sure that the foreground color is black because in order for this layer mask to work we must paint black on the white mask now if the mask is black then we must paint white it's just the other way around so what I can do is just come down and paint along the bottom of this right here and what I think I'll do is make sure that this opacity is at 100%, and that'll help us out a little bit. Probably set at 20% from the last project that we did on the DVD, but I'll just come through here and do this. Now you see how that's very gradual? Now you see how that can kind of look like it's in the water a little bit more? Because it just looked too perfect before. And then what I can do is hold down the Shift key, or I'm sorry, hold down the Space Bar to get the hand tool and then I'll just drag over to this image over here and I'll zoom into it just a little bit closer and then let's select oil tower far which is the top layer here and I'll, I'll add a layer mask on this layer as well and I'll select the brush tool with all the same settings or I could probably make that brush a little bit smaller being that this tower here is much smaller than the other one. I'll just right along the very bottom, making that blend in with the water. You see that? A 
look at that. I don't want to take off too much. That looks pretty good right there. I can maybe just make this brush just a little bit larger and fade that a little bit more on the bottom. Look at that. Okay, so let's go ahead and zoom out and take a look. Look at that. Okay, and any time we can go back and remove more if we want to. That's the great thing about smart objects is that if you find that you want to go back and remove a little bit more, like you say, you just weren't satisfied the first time you did it, well, you can just go back and make a change. And that's what's great about using a layer mask is that if we make a mistake, all we have to do is change the foreground to white and then come back through here and fill it back in. Look at this. So when I work on projects, I just like to make it so in case I do make a mistake, I can always go back and fix it. And that's just how most people should think and how most people should work in Photoshop. Let's go ahead and start adding more things to the montage dream scene. Let's go back into the Adobe Bridge and let's see, what can we do next? How about this? these two towers right here? I'll just go ahead and double click and bring these into Photoshop and then I'll select the move tool and drag these over and let's go ahead and make this a smart object so up here on layer smart object group into smart object and then I'll come up here to edit free transform I'll hold down alt and shift which is option and shift on the Mac and I'll resize these down let's position this oh, could be somewhere over here and I can probably pull these towers down so they look like they're closer. You see, because if, if they're back on the water too, too much, then it's going to make them look like they're farther away. But if I bring them a little bit closer like this, or just drag it down, it'll make it seem like it's closer. That looks good. I'll go ahead and press the Enter key on the keyboard to confirm that. And then let's go ahead and double click on this background copy, which I will now rename to Two Towers. And then I will double click on the Smart Object thumbnail up here on Filter. Well, first, before I do that, let's make a duplicate layer. There we go. Up here on Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And we'll blur these out too because these are a little distant and we don't want too much detail. I'll go ahead and click OK and then what I'll do is over here on File select Save and then I'll close this out. We're gonna need to mask the bottom of these two towers as well so I'll make a layer mask by clicking right here on the two towers layer right here and I'll select the paintbrush and I can press D and X on the keyboard to get the black as the foreground and then I'll just bring this brush over and get rid of these trees here some of these things you might not be able to see from far away and that's okay and then I can select the move tool and bring whoops let me go ahead and click on the smart object there let me try that one more time. Bring this down. And there's one thing, though. Uh, I think it might be a bug, but there's no link. You can't link the mask and the smart object together. So if you move the smart object anywhere, then you're going to have to click on the mask and then move the mask down. You see that? So you almost have to do both. Why it's like that, I don't know and I haven't taken a look at the CS3 version yet to really see if that's still there or not but there we go take a look at that now let's zoom out and see how that looks okay that's pretty awesome it looks like this building here I could probably move this over just a touch and then of course I'll have to move the mask over there we go 
just to add just to make these two more farther apart okay this is looking pretty good how about we add some smoke coming out of these two towers here that would be pretty cool so let's click on two towers I'll make a new layer above that layer and we'll call this smoke and for the smoke what we can do is on this new layer I'll select the lasso tool and I'll get just a little bit closer here I'll create this selection a smoke usually well when it comes out it's usually a little bit narrower and then it sort of expands or gets a little bit wider as it goes up so we'll, we'll keep that in mind the first time I do this it might be a little bit different but I'm just gonna make something that looks like this and that doesn't look too great because you you want to sort of try to avoid any straight edges when you're doing things like smoke or clouds or whatever but there's a shape for you right there that we can use and then what I can do is come over here to select feather and feather the selection that we've created so anything that we do inside of that selection is going to be soft around the edges so let's see feather radius of about 10 yeah, I could probably undo that. I might be able to get away with something like 20. A feather radius of 20. There we go. And what we're going to do is apply a clouds filter inside the selection to create the illusion that it's smoke. Uh, but before we do that, though, we must make sure that the foreground and background are either white or black. So you can see over here on the toolbar, they're both black right now. But if you press D and X, on the keyboard you can switch back and forth so a good idea just make sure that uh, the foreground is white and the background is black and then come up here to filter render and select clouds and look at that and then I'll come over here to select and deselect and now we have some smoke and if you find that that's a little bit too harsh what you can do is lower the opacity of this layer just like this so you can just barely see it look at that all right let's move over to the Adobe bridge and let's go ahead and bring our elephant into the montage here so I'll double click on the elephant and then I'll select the move tool which is already selected and I'll just click on the elephant and drag him into the project there we go and I'll rename this layer to elephant and then I'll convert this elephant to a smart object so I'll come up here to layer smart object there we go and then I can go over here to edit free transform and resize this down there we go and so we want to make it look like this elephant is inside the water and of course I guess the water would have to be more shallow at this end of the ocean or, or whatever it is so I'm just gonna bring this down a little bit closer here and since this is a smart object if I ever need to go back and resize the elephant I can so what I'll do is just go ahead and confirm this transformation And then I'll make a layer mask on this elephant smart object layer here. And I'll zoom into the image. I'll select the brush and make a little bit bigger brush here. And I'll paint on this layer mask to hide those feet. And if the more I go up, the more it looks like he's deeper in the water. Look at that. And that might even be just a little bit soft. So what I can do is turn up the hardness just a touch there and try that again.
There we go. Now we're going to do a lot more stuff to this water around here to make it look like this elephant is really in the water. Because when things are usually in the water, you you usually have like puddles or maybe little waves around the area where they are. So I'm going to show you how to create that. And what we can do is click on the water layer here, which I didn't rename earlier. So I'll just go ahead and do that now. And I'll select the elliptical marquee tool. And what we can do is create ripples around where this elephant is. So it looks like he's really in the water. Let's select the whole area underneath this elephant. So both, all four of the legs, something like this. And then I'll come up here to select feather. And we can select maybe 25 for the radius. I'll click OK. Up here to filter and distort and twirl. There we go. And then what I can do is select the two front legs here. And then come up here to select feather and feather this by 20. Okay, filter, distort, and zigzag. And zigzag will create that puddle type look. As long as, long as you have the style here set to put, uh, pond ripples, then you should get that effect that I'm talking about. You see that? And you can control the strength of that as well. And the ridges and, and all that. So, so the, the, the small changes that you make here are really going to make all the difference. But So just be careful. I like to make just very subtle changes of, to things. But look at that. And then I can do the back legs here. And you can almost barely, almost barely see those changes. You have to zoom into them a little bit. Select feather. And then I will apply the same setting as I did on the first two legs. Photoshop places the last filter used at the top of the menu, so I can just select zigzag from there, and there we go. And check that out. And if you want, you could probably select the entire bottom area. You know, we're going a little crazy now, but some people like to see things more dramatic, so if that's you, then you can come up here and, and do that zigzag for something like that. And you can see that this was before, we could probably get the before image here. And I'll zoom in so you can see this just a little bit better here. Okay, this is before, and now this is after. That way it doesn't look like the water is just so perfect around the elephant. And we're going to go ahead and add a shadow and all that stuff later on. But we're going to add the wings onto this elephant. Let's go into the Adobe Bridge. And we have a cropped image here of some wings. And I already cropped this out. This is actually cropped out of a... Oh, it was this big seagull or something that was in the water. And so I cropped the wings out of it. And I already did all this. You don't have to worry about it. But And the resolution was not that great. But the thing is, is that if you're going to create something like an elephant with wings, well, it's going to take a little time to find a photo with a bird that is kind of going in the same direction. And which is kind of funny is that the bird was actually, the bird actually had his back faced towards the camera. But I really focused on the way the wings looked. And then I placed that image over the elephant and it just, for some reason, it seemed to work, or it was the closest thing I could get. So let's go ahead and I'll click on this one, or I'll select the Move tool, 
right click on this, make sure I have that selected. There we go. I'll click on this wing here and drag that over to the montage scene. And let's just name this left wing. I can go back over to this, select this other one, drag that over, and we'll call this right wing. And then while we're at it, let's just go ahead and save this. Montage video. And while I'm at it here, I think I'll just move this over a little bit and we can close these other images because we no longer need them. And if we need to recall any of this, we can just go back into the Adobe Bridge. Let's go ahead and continue the image here. And let's start with, we can start with the right wing because we're gonna get this wing over on this elephant. And I'll select the Move tool and we can bring this down and of course we need the wing or the right wing in front of the elephant. So what I'll do is just click on this layer and drag it above the elephant layer. There we go. And I'll just position this in a way and we sort of have to imagine this is really gonna be on the elephant and all that. Well, that looks pretty good. And if it's an elephant, well, the, the wings must be pretty big, right? So they will pick up the elephant and fly away. So I figured I'd make the, the wings as big as possible, uh, as long as they still work. Uh, but this looks pretty good. And then what we can do is, well, we can also make this a smart object. I'll create a layer mask on this layer and I'll use the paintbrush here and I'll zoom in and then I can start to paint on this mask. So we can make the wing here blend in. Look at that. And I'll probably undo the bottom here because usually most of the time it's just this top here is where the wing is connected. And I'll probably turn up the hardness of this brush just a little bit. Now, I don't want to make this bottom here too soft because usually wings are not attached uh, down here, but they're usually not attached at this point either, but we might have to fudge it here a little bit since we're kind of making this up with an elephant with wings. I'm going to come through here and see if I can... Make this blend just a little bit more. I'll turn down the opacity to about 50%. Something like that. So it really looks like it's a part of the elephant there. Move that mask around just a little bit. Okay, I think I like that. And there's also shadows and other things that we should create to make this look a little bit more realistic. Uh, but while we're at it, let's go ahead and click on the left wing or turn that on and move that above all the other, or I'm sorry, below the elephant because we want that behind the elephant here. And I will just zoom out a little bit and so I can see this just a little bit closer. I think originally, I think I might have had that wing down too low. 
It's sort of hard to imagine because we can't see the other side of the elephant, so we have to kind of guess on where this is. And that's, you know, you can kind of luck out. Uh, really the hard part, well, it's not really a hard part, but the most time-consuming part of creating a montage is finding the photos that are going to work. And so, and I've already done a lot of that for you already. I'm just showing you how to put it all together. So all you have to do is go find the right photos and then you can follow some of the techniques on this video and create your own images. But I think that looks really good right there. Now what we can do is create a shadow. Oh, I can just, just click on the water layer and make a new layer above that. And we can call this elephant shadow we can either paint the shadow you know there's a lot of things we can do here looks like we have some light hitting this tower over here so you know if you're going by that then you have to kind of imagine the lights hitting the front nose here or the head of the elephant and so the shadows would be more back. It doesn't have to be perfect, but as long as we have some type of shading there, we should be okay because you could spend a lot of time getting the shadows just right. You know, depending on your, your theory with art and all that, uh, you can make this probably a lot better than I am. I can lower the opacity of that because I really don't think that needs to be a very, very dark shadow. But as long as we have some type of shading there, I think we'll be okay. What else I can do is use a layer mask on this water layer here. and just make that a little bit darker down where his feet are just a little bit darker there There we go. It's a little hard to make stuff when, if you've never seen it before or, you know, or you're taking different photos that have all the lighting on all the photos or the objects are all different. Uh, there's no, they're not all the same. So we have to sort of make something up here. But I think that looks pretty decent. All along, I knew I was going to blend all the colors together in this entire image. And that helps it make it look like everything the towers the elephants and the wings and everything is really there all at the same time in the same spot before i move on to the color blending though to make it look like everything's together what i'm going to do is add some more fog in this image just to create some type of drama effect that may be needed so what we can do here is i can click on the topmost layer make a new layer above that and we can call this fog. And for now, I'll just save this image. There we go. And then what I can do over here on the toolbar, let's select the rectangular marquee tool. And then I want you to draw a selection just above the water here. Something that looks like this.
yeah, just like that. And you can adjust the size of the fog later on if you want to. But I'm going to come up here to select and feather the selection. And it's almost the same thing as when we created this, the smoke for these two towers in the back here. I'm going to feather the selection with a radius of about 30. There we go. And then I'll come up here to feather. Uh, before I do that, make sure that the foreground and background color is set properly. So we'll want to press DNX on the keyboard. Make sure the foreground is white, the background is black. I'll come up here to filter, render, and we'll go ahead and render clouds. Select, deselect. There we go. And then I will lower the opacity of this layer, or what I can do is, is go through the, go through the blending modes here. You can do like an overlay or a screen, which I found I've been using the screen for this, for this effect for a long time. Just to help us, you know, create some type of drama here. And if we're not sure about it, if we're not sure about the opacity setting right now, we can always come back to it later. And if I select multiply, that's going to blacken it up a little bit too much. But if you like that, then you can leave it like that. There we go. I'm not going to go too crazy with it right now, but you get the idea. All right. Now the moment that I've been waiting for. See, there's a little secret that I've been wanting to show you since I finished this Photoshop Top Secret product. And now that it's finished and that you're right here, I can finally show you what it is. And it's the color blending technique that I use for a lot of the montages that I create. So they all look like they're there at the same spot at the same time. You see, because anytime we're creating collages of different things or montages, we're using all different types of photos and all those photos have different lighting and all that. So I'm going to show you a really cool color blending technique that we're going to do right now to make it look like everything is together. So what I want to do first is come over to the layers palette and let's just make a new layer and make sure that the topmost layer is selected. In this case, that is the fog layer. So I will make a new layer on top of that. And let's just call this brown and then I'll go over to the toolbar and click on the foreground color and we're going to create this color of brown and I want you to enter in B 2 9 A C or 7 I my C's and the 7's are, are mixed up today I guess uh, B 2 9 A 7 C Okay, and as soon as you have that color, go ahead and click OK. Then what I want you to do, select the paint bucket right here, click on the image to fill that in with that color, and then come up here to the blending mode menu and select color as the blending mode. Now this is the first step. You see, yeah, it's, it's obviously a brown color overlay on a layer above it. It's not too exciting. But here's the thing, is that to make this look even more cooler, we're going to add two more color layers on top of this brown layer that is just going to make it look amazing. So let's create another new layer on top of this brown layer. And I'll call this blue. And then over here on the toolbar, let's select the foreground and in the same spot in the hex value input area down here, let's enter in four, seven, five, three, six, eight. And when you have that, then go ahead and click OK. Same thing, go ahead and fill this in. Fill this whole layer in with this color. Then I want you to select overlay from the blending mode menu. OK? Now, do you see the difference, what's happening here? And we're going to do something else just after this. We're not quite done yet, but you can see what's happening is that now we have more of that blue that's inside the image, giving it more of that like film type look or more of it's like a uh, sort of like a uh, cross-processing color effect that they use in film, which is really hard to create with digital images. So check it out. 
and I'm not going to zoom in and check it out just yet because we're going to add one more new layer to finalize this effect. So create a new layer and you can just call this blue two. And then we're using the exact same blue. So all you have to do is just click on the image, fill it in. Then I want you to select overlay once more, but this time I want you to turn down the opacity somewhere around 70% or you can even go lower if you want to. And there you have it. And so you can see what's going on here is that we can start to see what's too dark and what's too light. Now obviously the wings are a little bit too dark so now after we've already done the color blending we can go back through here and adjust the brightness of some of the layers like the wing we can create adjustment layers for these. So I can, I can activate those layers, hold down the Alt key, which is the Option key on the Mac, and I can come down here and click on the Adjustment Layer icon. And let's select Brightness and Contrast. I'll put a check in this box here, click OK. And I can brighten those wings up a little bit. Look at that. Now, not too much, though, because we don't want that haze look but you can see this is before and this is after because i figured the brightness of the elephant he's a little bit lighter so i figured it would look better if the wings were more along the lines of of the brightness of the elephant so look at that and then i'll go ahead and click ok and then i'll click on the left wing hold down alt option on the mac click on the adjustment layer button select brightness and contrast Go ahead and release the Alt key. I'll put a check in this box right here. And we'll do the same for this wing over here as well. So all I'm doing is just increasing the contrast or I'm increasing the brightness and then I'm lowering the contrast just a little bit. Because if the contrast is lowered, it's going to remove some of the black. If it's increased higher, then it's going to increase that increase the darker areas, which we don't want. So I'm gonna go ahead and just lower the contrast, increase the brightness, and then go ahead and click OK. And look at that, let's look at the fog here. See what we can do with that. Because things can look a little bit different after we apply the color technique that we just used. If you ever have fog or smoke, well, you can bring out the detail in that. What you can do, I'll zoom in here. What you can do is come up here to Filter, Sharpen, Unsharp Mask, and what you can do is increase the radius and then turn up the amount of sharpening. Look at that. You don't want to go too high, but just, you know. There you go. You can see this is what, what it was before, which is a little bit soft. So I can add a little bit more detail in that by using the Unsharp mask. Wow, that's looking pretty hot. And let's just zoom into this and take a look at it. Go full screen. And I'll hit tab on the keyboard to make our palettes go away and there is our montage beautiful you can do this with so many things you this is just one image that i've created using the techniques uh you know we've made images or we, we've made objects farther away than some and we've blurred those to make it look like they're placed farther back uh, we've added fog we've created smoke ripples and water shadows and so Go ahead and have fun with that. And uh, if you do create any spectacular images uh, or something that you think that looks cool, go ahead and send it to me. I'd love to check it out. And I apologize for my scratchy voice because I think I've done so many videos <laughs> that I'm losing my voice. But uh, bear with me and hope you guys enjoy the video. We'll see you on the next one.